If you're a UX or product designer looking to build your first portfolio or redesign your existing portfolio, Framer has an incredible selection of free templates that can give you a great starting point and save you a ton of time on designing and coding your website. There are so many different low to no code website builders out there in 2025 like Webflow, Wix, Squarespace, and now Figma sites. But Framer stands as one of, if not the best options for building a portfolio. And I can confidently say that after building my current portfolio website using Framer. But before we jump in, I'm gonna go over what makes a great portfolio template so you can pick one that works for you, not against you. Let's get into it. A good portfolio template should do these three things really well. First off, it should be simple yet effective. That means when someone lands on your site, they get a clear impression of who you are, what work you do, and what content they can navigate to within your website. When people are viewing your site, you don't want to lose their attention because of complex navigation, overwhelming text and colors, and unnecessary animations that just confuse the viewer. You want to find a good balance between minimalism and creativity, so look for templates that offer that. Number two, you want a template with easy customization. The template you choose should include modular sections that let you swap out image, text, and color to let you reflect your personal brand and style so that you don't end up with a portfolio that looks like an obvious template. Also, one key part of UX portfolios is case studies, so ideally the template that you pick will come with a customizable case study page built in. Number three is response. Responsiveness. Any website, including portfolios, should be able to adapt to both desktop and mobile screen sizes. So it goes without saying that the framer template that you choose should be responsive and mobile friendly. A couple bonus points to look out for when choosing a template is built-in animations and support for both light mode and dark mode. With that being said, let's dive into my three favorite framer templates that you can use for your next UX portfolio for free. And you can find links to all three of them in the description. So this first one that I want to show you guys is Amberite. And just like the next two, this is a free portfolio template. And we can see here it has seven different page layouts included. If I scroll down, I can see a preview of a few of the different pages that come with this template. And if I scroll further down, I can see the features that are included with this template. Something I like about Framer templates is I can preview any of them in my browser as if it was a real website. And this gives me a good impression about whether this template would work for my needs or not. So when I imagine a clean and modern portfolio, this is pretty much what I imagine. It starts off with a big header, then a subheader below that, and then your social links. So it gives you a strong impression of who you are right off the bat. And in all three templates that I'm going to show you today, the next section after the hero section is a preview of your design project, which is something I recommend any UX portfolio has on the homepage so that viewers can quickly view what type of work you've done. And with this particular template's projects preview section, uh, it has kind of a bento box grid style with differently shaped image previews for each project, which is pretty cool. And this template also includes a section for blog posts. So if you write blog posts as a UX designer, a template like this might be good for you. A part of this template, it also comes with a dedicated page layout for each blog post. Then if we go to the work page, this is just a full view of all your projects. And again, we have kind of a bento box grid style going on here. And as a UX designer, having an about page is probably going to be important for you. And this one has a pretty clean one. It includes an image that you can replace on the right and then a brief paragraph about you. And below that we have a services section. Uh, this could be really useful for you if you're a freelancer especially. And you can also let the viewer download your CV or resume here as a Google Drive link, for example. And at the very bottom we have a tools section to show viewers what tools you're familiar with. Another thing about this template is it has kind of a smooth scrolling effect. I'm not sure if you can tell right now, but basically Framer is overriding the default scroll speed in the browser and replacing it with a custom one. And you may or may not like that. Uh, this is a customization that you can actually remove in Framer if you want to. The next template I wanna show you guys is called Kuro. So this template's homepage is, again, really clean, slightly less minimal than the last one we looked at, but still obviously pretty minimal and simplistic, which is something that I typically go for when it comes to web design. We have this available for work badge at the top, which is a cool little feature if you're a freelancer especially. Then a preview of your projects. And next we have this carousel that shows reviews from people that you've worked for. And this is, again, super useful if you're a freelancer to show people that you're a reputable designer and that people can trust you. And this template comes with this carousel functionality built in, so you don't even need to touch the code at all to make this work. All you're going to have to do is change the content, which is why templates are so useful. Then there's a view services button, which will show all the services that you offer as a designer and then also include FAQs and that same review carousel down here. 
Then back on the homepage, we have the My Stack section, which shows the tools that you work with. And at the end, we have another blog post section. And then if you have a newsletter, you can prompt the viewer to sign up for that. One thing I really like about this template is this fixed left-hand side uh, navbar. Most websites you go to, the navbar is just gonna be stuck at the top and you have to scroll all the way back up from where you are to reach it. But with this template, this is immediately accessible at all times. And like any portfolio template, you're gonna have a project page. And then this template also includes a project page layout so that you can quickly get started on replacing this placeholder content with your own case studies content. So overall, this is another really good template for freelancers especially, but also suitable for non-freelance designers. Uh, and it's, again, totally customizable to suit your own needs. One thing that I looked for when I was looking for a framer template personally was having support for both dark and light mode. And that's one way you can test it by going to your system's preferences, changing it, and seeing if your framer template automatically adapts to it. Now, the third template I wanna show you is called Dusk. And this is actually the template that I used as a starting point for my current portfolio website. So you can tell from the preview here that it's pretty minimal. Uh, that's one reason it's such a good starting point, but it still includes enough page layouts to be really useful. So let's check out the preview here. So this homepage is definitely the most minimal out of the three. It just comes with a headline here and then a preview of our projects or case studies. And that's actually it for the homepage. Of course, you can add other sections that Framer offers, but in terms of what's native to this template alone, this is all you're gonna get for the homepage. Then we have a projects page and about page, which again is pretty minimal, but it offers some useful text layouts here and you can specify the different services you offer and a call to action at the bottom. One of the main things that drew me to this template was the contact page. And it just includes only the necessary information for a good contact page. So looking at my current portfolio website, you can see I took the template that we were just looking at and then adapted it quite a bit. So I changed the layout of the headline a bit. I added a subheader. I added a picture of me. Uh, I changed the look of the project's preview section a bit. And since right now, at least, I want my website to be tailored to being viewed by recruiters and hiring managers, I added this little section at the bottom showing the tools that I'm familiar with and then a little description about me. And I included this learn more button where the user can click to navigate to my full about page. And like I said before, one thing you really wanna make sure of when you're looking at a template that you might wanna use is that it's completely responsive and all the content on the page adapts to work for both desktop and mobile screen sizes. So what you can do if you're on your computer is uh, shrink your browser down to a mobile width and just make sure all of the content is fitting properly and responding to that change in width. So that's it. Those are the top three free framer templates that I would recommend you to use for your next UX portfolio. When I was first starting off in Framer, I spent so many hours sifting through templates to see which ones I like most. And I encourage you to check out the full Framer template marketplace as well. But if you want something quick and easy, I encourage you to use one of the templates that I showed you today. Good luck and I'll see you in the next video.